Shabana has been in fact come from a small town in eastern UP called Azamgarh. The town was once renowned for its Muslim intellectuals and poets, but today Azamgarh is notorious, not just because of its underworld links, but because of a recent arrest of an alleged terror mastermind. So why are the Muslims in Azamgarh getting radicalized? I travelled there to get this story. It's a voice that's heard rarely in Azamgarh these days. Shahda Abazmi remembers his literary idol, Kafi, and hopes that men like Kafi and Murtaza Shibli will once again be born in Azamgarh. But if one looks at the recent history of Azamgarh, it looks very unlikely. Today the district is known as the hometown of underworld dons like Abu Saleh. And now the arrest of the alleged Gujarat terror attack mastermind Abul Bashar Kasmi has added an even more dangerous edge to the town's image. Cleric in his late 20s, Abul Bashar Kasmi was nabbed from this house in Sarayamir in Azamgarh, where he stayed with his six brothers, a paralytic father and an ailing mother. Abul Bashar had studied at this madrasa, but the seminary's proprietors maintain that it's wrong to blame them for the growth of extremism. But what's undeniable is that every year, around 300 madrasas that have come up in and around Azamgarh produce a crop of thousands of young clerics. Abu Sufyan, who runs a girls' school at Sarai Meer in Azamgarh, feels the community needs to break free of these madrasas if it has to progress. At least 90% of these madrasas are going to go there. And what is the output from there? But one reason why Muslims, particularly from the poor background, send their children to madrasas is because there are very few opportunities to do anything else here. और यहाँ आठ एमपी हैं राज्यसभा के और लोकसभा के मिलाकर कोई भी बड़ा उद्योग नहीं बिजली की दशा यहाँ पत्थर चलती है लैंड होल्डिंग बहुत कम है टुडे आजमगढ़ इस विटनेसिंग अ न्यू वेव ऑफ ऑर्थोडॉक्सी व्हाइल इट्स लिबरल पास्ट फेड्स वे इन द आफ्टरमैथ ऑफ द रीसेंट टेरर अटैक्स द about the motivations of its members and more significantly about the reasons for which young Muslim men were drawn to this orthodox organization. Here's the inside story. <laughs> Yaseen Patel has no qualms admitting his Simi links. In 1983 in Jamdipal I joined Simi. For this 40-year-old U.S. green card holder and for many youths like him, Simi's ideology proved more attractive than any other. They don't, they don't smoke, they don't drink, they don't go after uh, girls. They are so sincere about their own life and the uh, uh, well-being of the country. The community leaders feel that lack of guidance is what proved disastrous for Simi. In the beginning, they were supervised by jamaat e islami They were like the youth wing of jamaat e islami But the problem is that uh, very soon they saw it as a burden. They didn't want any supervision from their elders. And since they were young people, they just got carried away by the freedoms that India offers in terms of uh, political activism, in terms of publication, expression of your views uh, about whatever you feel. Yaseen Patel ended up paying a very heavy price for his association with Simi. From 2002 to 2004, he spent over two years in Tihar jail after he was charged of sedition. But he remains convinced Simi is not what many believe. I haven't changed a bit, Alhamdulillah. Because what I have embraced is the best in the world. So why, why, why I need to change? You tell me this is illegal, I'll fit it. Anti-nationals or just fall guys? Simi activists now look more like revolutionaries without a revolution to attend. Coming up on the show, how terrorism is taking a toll on the community. Keep watching. I'm a Muslim in India.